financial freedom can be defined as having enough money to live on and the freedom to choose how you spend your time. Whether they are conscious of it or not, it is what most people are working for and will pretty much all achieve it, provided we live long enough. We also call it retirement. The problem is that it takes 40 years to achieve and it often falls short of our financial aspirations. But does it have to be that way? What if I told you that you could achieve financial freedom in just a few years by walking 308 kilometers across Portugal? Would you embark on that journey? This may sound like a brazen statement at a time when 60% of the population is living from paycheck to paycheck. But this walk could help you visualize the logical path to financial freedom and significantly improve your chances for a successful transformation. Over 20 years ago, I was a corporate executive uh, managing a few countries for a multinational. My wife and I had a two-year-old son and we were expecting a little girl. I was due for a promotion and this is when I decided to quit my job. I realized that I didn't want the life of my bosses always on the go. What I wanted was free time to see my kids grow up. But at the same time, I wanted a certain level of comfort and to be able to buy them all the best opportunities of the world. So what was I supposed to do? I approached it as a business challenge. After all, like many of you, I was capable of uh, handling complex issues and antagonistic objectives for my employer. So why wouldn't I be able to do the same for myself, for my own life? This led me to a logical thought process articulated around seven considerations. Introspection, vision, congruence, action, resilience, flow, and luck. And before we go through them, there are three underlying principles to this transformation, to this approach. Principle one, your life is yours to live. Nobody should tell you how to live your life. Principle two, do not take what people say at face value. Be open-minded, listen, analyze the information, re reach your own conclusions. Principle three, there is no miracle solution. And there is no revolutionary insight in this narrative that you cannot find somewhere else. Yet, I hope that this logic will touch some of you in ways that you've never experienced before. And to make it more relatable, I created a metaphor for it by walking 308 kilometers across the width of Portugal from the Spanish border to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, I had never done anything like that before. So I approached my friends, you know, like, um, but to, for them to join in in the adventure, and they were like, 308 kilometers, are you crazy? We're never going to make it. So I had to uh, decide for myself, do I want to do it alone? What if I get lost? What if I get hurt? Do I even need to create a metaphor? Okay? And while I was entertaining the idea to create a vision for it, I saw myself walking 14 days and writing in a blog uh, the parallel between the two journeys. But I also had to uh, analyze the distances and uh, look at the elevation on the trail and plan where I was going to sleep at night. And of course, if I wanted to have any chances of success, I had to train. Walking to, uh, uh, to a coffee shop every day would not do it. I had to be consistent with my objective. Eventually, the time for action came, and my wife drove me to Alcutim, a small Portuguese village uh, by the Spanish border. As we said goodbye, and I put on my backpack, I was full of anticipation, yet a little bit worried about the unknown. Until that time, I had been a potential hiker. When I started walking, I became a hiker, but a novice hiker. I was still fumbling with my GPS to find a trail. But the sun was shining. I felt strong. Hey, maybe it was going to be a great walk after all. By the end of the day, I understood that training 
without carrying a big backpack was not a good preparation for this journey. When I arrived at the, the home of an elderly couple where I was staying that night in a semi-abandoned village, there was no coffee shop, no supermarket, and no restaurants. And they told me that if I wanted a snack, I had to walk two kilometers to the nearest gas station. When I came back that night, I understood that this journey was going to test my resilience much more than I had anticipated. The next few days, my body was numb. My only thoughts were to put one foot in front of the other during the day and to take care of my body aches in the evening. But by and large, this was business as usual in the normal process of a long, uneventful, multi-day hike. Slowly, I noticed that my body was handling the, the load a little bit better every day. Um, I entered the zone. My pace was faster. My aches were fading. I was still facing uh, obstacles, of course, but I kept pushing. And by day 12, I saw the ocean from afar for the first time. This was super exciting. I felt like Christopher Columbus spotting land after an improbable journey. And by day 14, it was pure joy when I reached Cape St. Vincent, the thousand most western point of continental Europe. Straight ahead was America. I was so proud of my achievement, which I attributed it solely to my will and mindset. And I downplayed all the external elements that made it at time easier or more difficult. Easier when it only rained one out of the 14 days, and more difficult when I uh, encountered a, a pack of big aggressive dogs which I didn't dare approach and had to make a big detour in the mountain. I think you can all visualize this adventure. You may never have thought about walking 308 kilometers. You may not have any desire to do so, or you may not think you're capable of it. But I can assure you, with a little bit of preparation, the right motivation, the right mindset, and a little bit of luck, you too can walk ac across Portugal. And the same is true for financial freedom. You may not have given much thoughts about it, or you may not think you're capable of reaching it, or you're concerned about the mortgage and the school fees. But I can assure you, with the proper motivation, a little bit of preparation, the right mindset, and a little bit of luck, you too can reach financial freedom before retirement. First, you will need to do some soul searching. Why are you working? Is retirement your only goal in life? What happens if you uh, win the lottery? Why are you doing the job you're currently doing? What led you there? And then you'll have to create a vision for what financial freedom means to you. You'll have to answer a big question. What is your number? What is the amount of wealth or recurring income at which point you can stop working and become the master of your time? This number has to be concrete and with a strict timeline because that's how we set objectives in business. So in my case, just as an example, based on the lifestyle that I was aspiring to, I set my number at $5 million cash after taxes or $200,000 uh, of uh, a year of revenues or recurrent revenues, and I gave myself three years. This objective may seem insane to some of you, but I can assure you it will also appear as a clear lack of ambitions to others. But it doesn't matter, because it was my number. And the question is, do you know your number? Because without that, you cannot proceed any further. Your number determines the type of project and business model that you can embrace. Your idea has to be consistent with your objective. It, in my case, it would not have made any sense to try selling my time as a consultant with my objectives. I needed a project that, if successful, would allow me not to work anymore. Okay. So I zeroed in on an idea of a B2B reverse auction platform for the <laughs> retail industry using a subscription-based model. 
It's a very technical thing, but that was kind of my area of expertise. But while you're doing all this, you're still planning. Until you take the jump, you're not an entrepreneur. Only at that time you become an entrepreneur, but a novice entrepreneur. You will need a transition period. You will need to adjust your mindset from the employee to the more agile entrepreneurial thinking. You may need to adjust your personal life. And your project will need some time to take shape. These will be stressful times, full of doubts and uncertainties that will test your resilience. But by and large, it will be business as usual in the normal process of any venture. Eventually, you will adapt to your new reality. You will get used to handle obstacles. Your project will take shape. And uh, you will know to pivot when necessary. So it took me five years, two years longer than anticipated, to reach $200,000 of recurrent income and work only three days a month. Okay, so I was able to start a sabbatical life uh, centered around the kids' activities and family travel around the world. The project was still going, and eventually an investment fund bought me out because they wanted to realize the full potential of the project. They were happy to get a great deal, and I was thrilled to finally, to finally achieve complete freedom. My transformation is just an anecdote. I had put a lot of thinking and factors uh, on my side, but I still needed an extra push to seal the deal. And luck is that extra push that, an, that can make a good project and great, but that can also take down to its knees a fragile startup due to an expected event. Luck is just a fact of life and should not be a consideration in your decision-making process because it can be good or bad, and it affects your life as, as an employee. I mean, you can have a bad boss, you could be fired, or worse, you could be working for the next 40 years. The only thing you can do is try to know yourself a little bit better and chase your dreams following a logic that can significantly improve your chances for success. And if you still have uh, some doubt about changing your ways, just start walking. You too can walk across Portugal. Thank you.